At Kroger, we believe fresh means holding our produce to a higher standard. That's why we do up to a 27-point inspection on our produce. Like for citrus, we check for things like scarring and sunburn. Yep, oranges can sunburn. And we'll make sure you never see it. In fact, we only allow the best oranges, lemons, and grapefruits to reach our shelves. Because when it comes to fresh for everyone, we believe the juice is worth the squeeze. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Welcome to Cosmic Channels. Open minds on cosmic lines. To call in to future episodes, the number is one 833 7030424 The show is recorded live the second and fourth Sunday of every month. Please subscribe to Alien Theorist Theorizing on YouTube to watch it live or patreon.com slash alien theorists podcast to watch on demand. The cosmic channels are open. I'm Braden. And I'm Zell. Got the OG, the OG2 here. OG2. Uh, what do we call ourselves? Major- the majority shareholders. The majority shareholders, the true <laughs> cosmic channelers. Yours truly. Uh, this is cosmic channels number 50, a milestone that one, we never thought we would hit with ATT. And two, I never, ever thought we would hit with cosmic channels. No chance. <laughs> Anytime you start a show, you're like, oh, man, I, ho- I hope to get 10. If we get 10, I'd be happy with 10. And then, and just so you know, if, uh, you know, we're going to be a little, today. we first 50, we're easy on you. If we get a hint of the, the dream, any dreams coming out, dream police coming out. The lights are on. Uh, they're, they're ready. They're ready to pull you over and just end the call. Uh, so just the, be prepared for that. The police are always circling. And uh, as same thing as last week, uh, you know, if we get a little over 7.30 and, uh, you know, we get into a little bit of uh, Cosmic Channel's Dark, you you call in with a story that's subpar and it runs past 7.30, you might see yourself getting roasted, but we'll see what happens. If you we, if we go into so, overtime on Cosmic Channels, the show changes real quick. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> real it's, quick. Uh, fuck you, call us. Well, you better have a yeah, fucking good story if it's after 7.30. Fuck if you're yeah. keeping us for overtime. Uh, And on this episode of Cosmic Channels, from 50 onwards, maybe not every episode, but from here and there, we're going to bring on a new segment called What's in the Box? What's in the Box? What's in the Box? What the the fuck's in the Box? What's in the Box? So beside me, I have a mic box. And inside this mic box, there's an item. No hints will be given. But in order to... Because we, if you've been listening to ATT, we did an episode on remote viewing. We tried it when we went to Austin. We did not bad, actually, surprisingly. So I'm going to tell you that Meteor Studios, Meteor Sound Studio is in Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada. I want you to, throughout this episode, project your mind into my studio, telepathically fight the studio demon, try and peer through the box. And when you call, at the end of the call, we're going to ask you, What's in the box? What's in the, what's in the box? So, without any further ado, let's bring on our first caller. Hello, Cosmic Channels. Hey, boys. It's Free Will and Seth Cornelli again. Oh, welcome back to the show. Hey, what's going on? So, I got Lady Free Will next to me. I was going to say, I could have uh, swore the person... After- the person on the line was a lady before, and then yes, I was. I was like, oh, I, I was like, maybe it was that some weird ass frequency going on, but yeah. I thought so too. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> welcome back to the show. Yeah, I was testing your guys' skills. You, you're, you're on point. Perfect. Right. Um, you guys remember the the whole happenings in our in our house from last time? Yep, I do. All right. Well, she's right here. If you want to ask your uh, answer any questions. Hello there. All right. So I believe on when we were talking about it, you said you, you you would feel something 
or experienced something or you knew something was up. Can you explain how you come, yeah. how, you, how you come to that? I can't really explain how. Um, or what the feeling is, like what comes. Up. Yeah. Do. Um, it kind of hard to explain it it's like an energy type feeling um you know how like you feel anxiety like you get like heart palpitations and you kind of feel like some kind of internal dread um it's it's kind of like that but it's not necessarily internal dread it's, it's more focused on things um and then i also i, I don't see like full apparitions or anything but i see like outlines and sometimes shadows and are you fully awake yes and you, you, just to be clear you're not laying in bed you're not you you haven't awoken just awoken from a slumber no so you you're just kind of you kind of you feel a presence or an energy like you just feel something yeah. and it like pulls you to think a yeah. certain way Right. I, like, I feel something there. And some, not every time, but sometimes when I look, I see things, too. So what do you think you... And it it could be during the day. Like, it, it's not, like, in the dark or anything. <laughs> right. So it's almost like, do you, do you think, like... Because you're not the only person who said this before. Like, there's a... Perhaps, like, you're seeing maybe through a, like through the veil like into a different dimension or like into a different reality what do you think it is um I don't know that it's into the veil or in a, into a different reality because I feel like so I've experimented with um what's it called when you like try to walk in I can't remember what it's called but you try like, to like walk into like the middle dimension like when you're trying to go to sleep like yeah, astral projection. Astral projection. Sorry. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so I, I've experimented with that. Um, but I, I feel like that's a little bit different. Like when you're talking about different planes than, or like different right. places. Like, like I feel like it's here, if right. that makes sense. Right. So it's like a skill. Like it's not on a separate plane. Is it, is it something you've... Like, like worked at? No, it's it's been around since I was little. I, I think it's probably something that I've suppressed a lot. Um, when I was younger, I probably saw it more realistically than anything. Um, I had a lot of quote unquote quote imaginary friends, um, and I, I've talked to a couple friends like in middle school. Um, I've, at least one friend I've talked to in middle school, I kind of like vaguely asked her about something that was like imaginary friend related and she knew exactly what I was talking about. I'm pretty sure that was not an imaginary friend and it was a ghost. <laughs> are you uh, just curious, are you like a creative person, painter, artist, um, anything like that? Um, so I'm a lawyer, but I, I do a lot of sketching. Um, I play piano and I like to sing. I'll consider that a creative I've person. always kind of wondered if, you know, people who are more creative mm. and have a more vivid imagination are more sus susceptible. Is that the word I'm looking for? I think you to, got it. To um, these kind of experiences just because maybe mm. you're more in tune to, you know, Akashic Records or just um, wherever that creative process drives from and that opens some sort of door for this kind of uh, activity. I could see that. Yeah, my best friend at the time... Um, the one that I reached back out to vaguely, um, she was into art. She did a lot of art back then. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. If, uh, so, some people do say like the a crea more creative mind, something that thinks more abstractly, can be more susceptible to remote viewing, astral projection, that kind of stuff. So that's pretty cool. Okay. Now, while we have you on the line, we got this new game mm -hmm. called What's in the Box? What's in the What's box? In the box? <laughs> so, if you can clear your mind, try and project your consciousness into the studio. Peer through this mic box I have beside me. 
And the first thing that comes to mind, tell me what you see, what's in the box. Zell, I think you should open the box and you should just hold the item in your hand. Hold it in my hand? Yeah, off camera, obviously. Yeah, I'm going off camera. And just so everyone knows, this is so serious because we're looking for people with a certain set of abilities that Zell refuses to tell me <laughs> what's in the box him. in fear that I might punk him with someone. I'm, which is a fair enough. It's, it's a fair, fair. It's a fair. All right. It's so I, fair. I have the, I have it in my hand underneath the desk. I'm holding it. I'm going to project this object into the ether and see if you can receive it. I'm going to go with it's a slinky. I don't really know though. You're, you're feeling slinky. <laughs> yeah. I can't tell you if you're, if you're close or not, but I can tell you you're incorrect. Yeah, yeah. I like that. I can't tell you if you're close or not, but I can tell you you're dead fucking wrong. Well, oh, then I'm definitely not close. Can I tell? Can my husband tell you what he thought it was? Yeah, of put course. Him on. Yeah. Okay. It's a dick. <laughs> I am holding my dick underneath the table right now. In the box. <laughs> in the box. My dick's in the box. It's a good, it's a good, it's a good guess. We all know Zell's a woodworker. He's more than capable of drilling a quarter inch hole. <laughs> quarter inch, G- generous man, generous. Uh, hey, thanks for the call, guys. Yeah, that was awesome. You both dead wrong though, but yeah, absolutely dead wrong. You were, That's fine. don't quit your day jobs. You. You're not clairvoyant, <laughs> and you're not good at remote viewing. There you go. <laughs> all right, thanks for the call. We yeah, appreciate it. Duly noted. Uh, have a good night. Bye. I love this what's in the box. <laughs> what's in the box? <laughs> All right. First call down, just like that. Second call up. Hello, Cosmic Channels. Holy shit. Hey. Holy, Holy shit. Holy shit. I, I'm on. Welcome to the show. Yeah, this is Elijah Luna from Houston, yeah. Texas. Oh, from Houston, right? I on. love Houston. Good shout out to Purple Wizard. What was yes, that? Yes, yes. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Brayden. I love to get a shout out to Purple Wizard. Purple Wizards! Woo! Greatest band of all time. Holy, I can't believe I made it through. Um, Please tell us your story. um, Yes, I got a story. (laughs) Yes, I'm just so excited. I'm here drinking a beer. Cheers. Fuck yeah, cheers. Oh, hold on. Just one second before you tell us your story. Before I forget. Oh, yes, sir. Hey, big cheers to Andrew Strid. Just donated to the show. Uh, Big 50 on the chat there. Hey, thanks, Andrew. Uh, this yeah, see, this drink's for that. you. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. Hold on, hold on. Let me, let me unscrew my shit real quick. All right, we'll yeah. have quick cheers there. All right, cheers, boys. Cheers. Cheers, Andrew. Wow, well, I can't I can't believe I'm actually talking to you guys. Holy shit. My first episode I listened to, I was at work, and I was just listening to Spotify. All of a sudden, that came on. I was like, holy shit. You know, like... I. Like, I want to listen to these guys. I listened to it. I think my first episode was, like, one, 180, one something. Like, the Prince Edward Island episode. Oh, yeah. Right oh, on. Oh, yeah. Is that the, is that the, the old that uh, fucking sinkhole? made me laugh my ass sinkhole? off. Yeah, I whatever. laughed my ass off. First. Awesome, man. Well, hey, we appreciate oh, the sorry. support. What did you say, Brady? Oh, I said that's the... um. The yeah the yeah yeah we know the one the p yeah yeah okay yeah. it's good we're one. on the same page it was the one where one. where he had, where he had an extra toenail on the tip of his dick <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> just like Bill Brasky yeah, it was that episode that made me laugh my Bill ass Bill Brasky all right, all right um, let us know what you got all right so the warehouse I worked at uh, I worked at a warehouse I worked through a staffing company. And they placed me at this warehouse. You know, I never thought too much about it. You know, the place I work at, you know, they speak nothing but Spanish. So this one Saturday, you know, like, you know, I'm working overtime. I'm working a Saturday. And, uh, you know, like the warehouse is about to close because they don't have anyone to come in for Sunday night or for Saturday night. So we're all closing the warehouse and everything. They're all speaking in Spanish. They're all saying, oh, Diablo, this and that. You know, you hear those boxes? You know, they're all speaking in <laughs> yeah. Spanish. I can only pick up on so much. But I know exactly what they're talking about. I know, like, oh, Yo, yeah, if I hear If I hear Diablo Dios there. mio or El Diablo in, like, the same sentence, <laughs> I'm out of there. Peace. That's all I know. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I, could, I couldn't leave, you know, because clock out, yeah, shift changes at 1030, but you can't leave until 11. So I'm like, oh, I got to have to say, I have to listen to all this. I can barely understand what you're saying, but 
I have to stay because I want to make that money. Yep. And so, you know, I didn't believe him. Like, oh, they're probably just making up stories. Yeah, you know, there's boxes here, there's boxes there. Eventually, yeah, the noise is going to be made. You know, when the, when all the machines are shut down, eventually, yeah, you're going to hear some noises. And so, you know, anyways, like, I don't care. Like, maybe a month goes by, a month and a half. You know, I get asked, like, hey, Elijah, do you want to work a, you know, you want to work a 12-hour shift? I was like, yeah. Yeah, I'd love to work a 12-hour shift. I was like, you know, money. You know, I need the money. So anyways, you know, that 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 comes. It's about a month and a half later. You know, I'm working a 12-hour shift. Shift change comes. You know, everybody's clocking out there, leaving. I'm like, hey, you know, yeah, I'm going to go smoke a cigarette. Yeah, I'm just going to relax for like two minutes. And then I'm going to come back and I'm, I'm going to go back to the machine. You know, so there's three warehouses. There's the supply warehouse, there's the main warehouse, and then there's the other warehouse, the third warehouse. So, you know, um, uh, um, first, you know, like, uh, there's only there's only four of us there. There's the mechanic. Oh, I'm sorry, there's five of us, four of us. You know, there's the mechanic, the one who works on the machine, you know, like three other women, and then me. We're all in the same warehouse. My machine breaks down. You know, so I get put back in the third warehouse. And, you know, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. And, you know, there's machines all around us. And I'm just, like, thinking about the idea. You know, I'm just like, no, this place ain't haunted. And, you know, I see, I, you know, I'm like, I'm working on my machine. I'm doing this and that because the machine's moving slow. So I got time to do extra things, you know, like work on this. While at the same time, when this, when this piece of plastic pops out, I can do this to it. And then go back to what I'm working on. Or just let it build up, and you know, because I'm so good at what I'm doing. And um, so I'm doing that. And I look up, you know, like I'm not too too much worried about it. But there's a machine on the left of me. There's a machine on the right of me. And in the front of me, there's a pallet, you know. And, you know, I, you know I'm just uh, doing my thing. And I see, like, a shadow figure, like, move from the machine on the left of me to the middle of the pallet, behind the pallet. I'm like, oh, I'm not worried about it. Whatever. <laughs> if I, I, listen, I'd be fucking worried about it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't too worried. I mean, yeah, I was worried about it. But then again, I'm working so hard shit. Like, no, nah, I'm just tired. And, you know, right. that's all your imagination. You're just tired. You're just tired. Did you say, did you say tired? Back to the machine on the left. Yes, I was tired. I'm working a 12 hour shift. You know what I mean? I gotcha. Yeah, you know, it's about it's about two in the morning. It was actually right before the time change got. It, it was like uh, right. it was like it, uh, the time got changed back. It was fall back time. You know what I mean? Right. Spring forward, fall back. You know, like so the time change like went back. So it was like two in the morning. Like oh yeah, it's whatever. I'm not worried about it, and I keep doing my thing. I see the same thing that that apparition or that shadow kept moving back and forth you know like between the pallet and the machine right next to me on the you know the left side of me I'm like whatever I'm not worried about it I'm just seeing things I'm really tired I'm hungry you know I want to go home you know I, you know, I want to listen to more of you guys I want to listen I want to go home and listen to more of you guys you're thinking it's just mind tricks at this point like you're just tired hungry it's end of shift just seeing shit is what you're thinking yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. It was just mind tricks. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You're good, Elijah. Don't worry about it. And uh, so, anyways, it kept going back and forth like that. Like I looking up, like I seen something move. I look up. I'm on, I'm the only one in this part of the warehouse. You know, I'm the only one in this warehouse with all the machines going around. And they have like I don't know, 27 machines in like in like you know, three different warehouses. I'm the only one in this warehouse. You know, I'm like, whatever. And all of a sudden, I see that shadow figure. It goes between, you know, the machine right next to me to behind the pallet in front of me. And then it goes to, the, to uh, you know, behind the machine on the right of me. I'm like, whatever. You're just seeing things. You're tired. You're hungry. It's time to go home. You know, like, whatever. So I keep my head down. And then I look. I see this shadow figure walk on the machine on the right of me like you know like it was just passing by me i saw it in my peripheral you know what i mean right i'm like oh you're just tripping and all of a sudden you know like 
it's like uh, I hear like behind me in my right ear, Elijah. And I looked like it was a woman's voice. I'm like, holy shit. Yeah, I didn't say holy shit in my mind. I looked <laughs> like there's no one there. So I went back to doing what I was doing. All of a sudden, I see a shadow figure, you know, in my peripheral walk on a on the other side of the of the machine that's left me just like just run by or just like float by the, you know uh, and then i ended up telling the forklift operator about it like a couple weeks later i was like hey i actually do believe you now this place is haunted and he's like yeah I, yeah i know it is <laughs> every time you. i pass between the warehouses uh-huh. so, he's been so do you have you. any is there any reason is there any reason do you think that like what do you think why is that area haunted is there any is there any like talk amongst the employees about why or what reason was there a employee death or something like what is there any consensus as to what's going on other than el diablo i i don't know i mean diablo obviously means ghost in spanish but no i i didn't ask him i never asked him i thought like oh they're they're just they're all just joking around like it's mainly women you know like it's like uh, 10 to 1. When it comes to 10 women, there's one man. You know, so like, oh, they're all just joking around. They're just so afraid, you know, like, they're just making jokes. So like, I don't, like, and ju- I don't and just, think, just you know, so like, we're, I never thought Just about so we're it. clear, because I had a Google Translate because I didn't want to put my foot in my mouth, but Diablo means devil. Devil. Not yeah, ghosts. it means devil, but like the in the in the, in the like in the concept that they were using because we got Mexicans, we got Honduras, we got El Salvadorians, we got this and that. Like they all speak Spanish in the in the in the break room. I'm just sitting up by myself, just eating my fucking you know eating my ribs or you know like my sandwich or my tuna, and you know they're just all fucking blabbling on this and that, and I'm just like you so, know I can pick up on some things that they're saying. But you know, in the in the context that they were using Diablo, they they meant like ghosts. You know what I mean, or like maybe like a devil, but some type and, of and, and, you know, entity. In, in my sense, you know, I thought it. Yeah. You know, in my sense, like oh yeah, it's a ghost. You know, they're saying Diablo. You're like oh yeah. Hey, listen, all I'm saying is if you're here in Dios mio and Diablo in your warehouse, Get I out. would wear a cross to work. No big deal. Just in case, that's what I would do. Just in case. Yeah, no, no. I mean, I, I was hey, I, growing up. Yeah, um, my mother, she took me to church, me and my brother, you know, I never talk, I don't talk to them anymore, but you know, like, I, yeah, my father, on the other hand, you know, like, he never took me to church, never actually liked talking about, you know, God or this or that, so I never, like, never went to church, I don't have a cross around my house, you know, my apartment, you know, just, it's whatever, you know, it's whatever. Mean? All right, brother, hey, we got, we got, yeah, I, mean, I got to ask you a question, though. We're at the end of t- at the time of this call, so you have a you have a El Diablo Roman in your work your workplace. Is what we're thinking here, something's haunted, something's Roman, but more importantly, I want yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, there is. But um, <laughs> by the way, now that it's at the end of the call, <laughs> thanks for answering. I'm going to go back to your YouTube live. You know, um, like again. Um, oh yeah, yeah. One more thing, I gotta I gotta tell you guys. You know that song, Maester Daniel. Mace Daniel. Okay, okay. I've been thinking about it. That song, Mr. Crowley, yep. by Ozzy. We could literally just play um, Crowley with Daniel, and it would be the same shit. Hey, hey, Mace listen. D- hey, bum, bum, I, listen, bum. I'm not going to sit here and have you accuse the Purple Wizards <laughs> of ripping off Ozzy Osbourne, okay, buddy? <laughs> All right, hang oh, up on this guy. Did, There's no chance you. the Purple Wizards did, ever. They're, they're not plagiarists. It. That's an original song, and they didn't steal it from anybody. <laughs> okay, <laughs> buddy? All right? I knew it. You're steaming. I knew it the whole time. Look at this. Even this, guy's fucking, this guy looks like a cherry shit. tomato over here. You accuse him of this shit. But just before we let you go, I want you no, to... No, no, I was saying, I was saying... <laughs> y'all hey, buddy, what's it? in the box? Yeah. What's in the fucking box? What's in the fucking box? What's in the fucking box? That was original. Of course it was original. Yeah, but uh, Braden, it was good talking to you. Hey, by the way, have you ever thought of getting a face tat? Because that, that blue shirt you're wearing like, and that new haircut, <laughs> yeah, you need a face tat, man. All right. All right, man. We're gonna, <laughs> we got to go. We got to go. All right, brother. Thanks for the call. Dude, All right, brother. Care. All right, bye. Peace. Love you guys. Love, Love you too, buddy. Bye. bye. Adios. <laughs> I, couldn't oh. get, I couldn't get what's in the boxing.
Yeah, if we start yelling what's in the box at you, the, that's the cue, baby. Tell us what's in the box. Hey, some people are talkers, man. It's hard to get in there. It's all good. Hey, it's all good. It's all good. All right, let's bring another caller on. Wait, wait, wait. Before you take take that call, we got another donation. Uh, this drink is from Christopher Marino. What's up, buddy? Thank you for these. Um, you know, topping up the beer coffers there for Meteor Studios. Cheers, so, brother. And this is not water. The I am uh, breaking all the laws with the claws. The claws. Supporting Cosmic Channels, one beer at a time. We appreciate it. And cheers. All right. Hello, Cosmic Channels. Change the way you age with M-Drive. Supplements for guys who refuse to let age beat them. More energy, more lean muscle. Here's hockey legend Jeremy Roenick talking about his M-Drive experience. I've taken a lot of different things throughout my life, but I think now I just turned 50 years old. M-Drive has really given me a really confident feeling, feeling 50. I will tell you, I'm still on the golf course, and I'm still playing with the young punks, and I'm still hitting it as far as the young guys, and I'm still beating the young guys. <laughs> Your mind is going to work better. You're going to, you're going to have more fun. Your workouts are going to be better. And M Drive has just given me that confidence inside my body and inside my mind because I look better and I feel better. I don't feel 50. I don't act 50. For me, uh, 50 is the new 30, and I'm looking to make it to 100. I just refuse to grow old. Energy, strength, drive. M Drive supplements for driven men. Go to mdriveformen.com. Use code POD20 for 20% off your first purchase. Don't let age beat you. Visit mdriveformen.com. Target has everything you need for Easter fun on your next Target run, like basket building and brunching faves, decor, and candy galore. It's festive fun for everyone. Easter. Easy as target. What's up, guys? Can you hear me? We can hear you. Mm -hmm. Loud and clear. Awesome. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Let's go with Fanboy420. Oh, shit. All right. Nice. And this guy likes weed. Central Virginia. Central exactly. Virginia. Exactly. It's true. Obviously. Also known as West Virginia. West Virginia. Mount Mama. Mount Mama. All right. What do you got for us? Good evening, guys. Tonight, I bring to you the Ariel Burton Laser Plasma Hologram. It's a mouthful. That sounds awesome. So, yeah. So, uh, you know, like Charlie Red Star and all of the other, like, uh, orb or bright lights that we see dancing in the sky and strange patterns. There's a lot of cases that we've seen yep. like this. So I think this uh, Ariel Burton laser plasma hologram pretty much checks every single box for what could be, uh, how to explain it. And so if you take like all these phenomena, there's these features and characteristics about them that makes them extraordinary, that really kind of blows our mind. Like, you know, how can it move so fast without breaking the sound barrier? Um, and how can it be out in the sky like that and just appear and disappear? And Right. So uh, the way that this, and I, I can send you a little video that explains to you within a few seconds exactly what I'm talking about. You're talking, it's called the uh, Ariel, uh, company in Ariel Burton? Ariel, yep, laser plasma hologram. Okay. And I could be saying that wrong, but I'm, I'm looking at it as the A dot B dot laser, but it explains it in the video. Okay. So um, the way this works is it, it beams an infrared laser to create an ionization of the air molecules, which causes them to turn into plasma. So uh, basically what I'm suggesting is that a lot of these sightings that we're seeing are from somebody who's got the money or got the power to set up a massive rig of this and just do a little dance in the sky. And the way that um, it works, or the way that I'm saying that it sort of explains off the extreme variables is because um, if you were to move the laser in a direction to create that plasma, the plasma ball or plasma, uh, plasmatic air isn't moving, so it's not breaking the sound barrier. What instead is happening is that there is like a trace of plasma that would form. So there, there wouldn't be any sound related to the speed of which uh, we're seeing it. You know, it's not really moving. It's just very fast. Uh, the next space of air is turning into plasma. Does that make sense? Right. So 
plasma being the fourth state of matter, right? So someone has you're saying yeah, you're saying this is like a powerful laser because plasma is like ultra heated, right? That's pretty much what it is. So someone has someone could have a powerful laser, and it, as you move it across the sky, this object is not necessarily breaking sound barrier. It's just plasma is just being generated wherever you point the laser. Right, exactly. And, and, you know, it might be a little more complicated. This might be like a satellite that's receiving part of the signal right. or something. Um, and uh, so also it explains the weird dances that they do, because if you look at any kind of life it or any kind of conscious entity, it tries to be energy efficient. And what we're seeing looks more like a routine or a military operation or... You know, just something that's done in practice, but not to necessarily accomplish any kind of goal. They're just like up there, they're fusing as one, separating. And even in this short video that I'll, I'll just like send it to you in email or on Facebook or something, you can see them demonstrating some of the stuff that some of the people that I've called you guys have reported, like, um, like the sparkling lights or, you know, again, like the fusing and the, and the re-separating of multiple lights and then the, the dance patterns and whatnot. But, um, so yeah, you know, I just think that there's something going on here. A friend of a friend once suggested that he'd heard something. I heard it, overheard a conversation in the Pentagon talking about trying to make social impacts on people, you know, sort of like a psyop using sort of holograms. And I think this should kind of fit that bill. Not to say that that ever actually happened. That's just something that I heard. <laughs> right. Probably not relevant at all. But right. still, you, you, if you look at this laser, it, it just... I have no doubt that, ahead. like... I have no doubt looking at this thing that maybe, perhaps, in certain areas that this could account for some weird sightings that people are seeing. However, my counterpoint to that is there's just too many. There's too many spread out all over the world for this to account for 100% of what people are seeing and what, you know... Then we're getting into this thing of like, oh, well, does every city have one of these? Because if you go to MUFON, I mean, there's hundreds of reports from just about every city over the world about strange lights in the sky. So anything that can't be, you know, categorized by like a misidentified plane or satellite, weather balloon, Venus and Gatorade, anything like that is now this laser. I'm going to say that maybe we could account some of that to this particular laser but yeah again i don't know what the cost of it is well, i don't know the pricing is but to say that like this is a majority this could be a majority of them i doubt that but i'm i'm gonna say you know yeah, yeah. like it, it could be some of the ones that we're seeing and some of the ones that are unknown that i've seen well what about this? they spread and stuff what about this so yeah so I, I mean humans are pretty good at recreating you know events of nature it is on very small scale but you know what we have a giant ball of plasma the sun and it has solar wind which interacts with our magnetic field and that is you know that's like plasma right it's like the physical wave of plasma through the magnetosphere or whatever so may, maybe just the energy maybe you don't need a like a built laser by humans maybe some of these things that people see which i totally agree with is it, it we have northern lights as some type of like plasma phenomenon, but maybe there's others sure. that are just not quite identified yet. Or, yeah, it's, or well known or sure. known at all. Yeah, because that would, the amount of energy yeah. from the sun would like be all over the world. You may, let's say like you had these rare phenomenons and we people identify well, them as UFOs. Absolutely and stuff. ball lightning. You know, that's, that's definitely one occurrence that you could say for sure is a possibility for like what people are seeing. That's just a natural occurrence. I mean, also, Braden, I am just saying that this is only a few specific types of occurrences, ones that specifically fit this exact bill of looking like a bright orbish light with no particular shape and making no sound moving that fast. I also mm -hmm. am not uh, using this as an example to explain off any sort of art uh, uh, from a broad spectrum of UFO sightings. I definitely think that there are a lot of other cases that are going on that have absolutely nothing to do with this as far as like uh, extra, uh, extra ex or extraordinary aerial or, you know, uh, aquatic yeah. phenomena. Not to explain off any of that. Yeah. Just uh, those like Charlie Red Star slash like bright hey, lights. Some of you know what though? I'm, I'm taking a little bit of offense to you besmirching Canada's good old Charlie, Charlie Red, Red Star, Star right? right? 
I would uh, prefer if you left I'm Charlie sorry. Red Star out of your mouth here as an <laughs> American. All right, you have no business talking about Charlie Red Star. He's a goddamn Canadian hero, and uh, we're not going to have any of it on this show. Okay, buddy? <laughs> I'm just reading the... Uh, I'm on the website, though, Ariel Burton uh, thing. Um, it is a true 3D display using laser plasma technology. By using our device, you can create 3D images in the air. Yeah. That's their mission statement. And the product statement. Which now, is pretty we got, fucking cool. We got one question for you. That question. What's, What's in the box? the box? What's in the box? So if you been, <laughs> if, if you haven't been watching the live stream and you just call in without listening ahead of time. I've been watching part of it. I saw some someone comment about a dildo in a box. <laughs> But, uh, it was not in fact correct. What's in the box? Well, I want you to close oh, your no, eyes. Okay, okay. I want you to close your eyes. I oh, want you to. Right. I want you to project yeah, yeah, your I, consciousness okay. into Kelowna, BC, to Meteor Sound Studio, and I want you to identify what's in the box. So the this whatever first thing that comes to mind, don't think about it too much. If you get a picture, let us know what you think. What is it? What's in the box? To clear my mind, gotta be there. Gotta... Give me a second. No, take your time. Empty my mind. Empty it. Your mind is an empty rice bowl. Black and meaningless. Is it... Is it a toy? I cannot it's pretty, tell it's you... Like a, like a... <laughs> more specific. Like a... Like a... Um, like a little metal uh, airplane figurine or something like that. You, my good know, sir, man. are incorrect. That is not what's in the box. <laughs> hey. But thanks for the call. That's actually, uh, yeah, please send us some videos on that because that's actually, I mean, that's really cool technology, if nothing else, right? Super cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I hope somebody figures it out. Hell yeah. Because Me too. I want, I want to fucking to know what's show. in it. No one's going to know what's in the box. <laughs> as psychic as Zell. Zell, we should, I should get a box for you to guess because you're apparently the one. Don't you try and turn around this what's in the box on me. Yeah, yeah. I'm, hey, the, I'm the box master over here. <laughs> yeah. I'm not doing no guessing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cheers, buddy. Thanks yeah, for you're the, call. the one that got it, man. You, you, you're the two for two. All right, guys. All right. <laughs> Good hey, night, y'all. Hey, thanks for the call. Bye. <laughs> You, you you are the remote viewing master because of your skill set is why we're doing this. We're looking for the best of the best remote viewers. The best of the best Literally, of the best, sir. Listen, we we have an interview coming up with a couple uh, documentary filmmakers and we told them that we're doing this experiment, experiment. And they're like, if someone gets it, will you forward their name on to us? We're like, yes, <laughs> yes we will. We, yes, we will. <laughs> All right, let's bring another caller on to Cosmic Channels. Hello, you're live. Oh, what's up, man? I got on. You're on. All right, yeah, that's awesome. I've listened to you guys for like a few months, and I was just like, man, I did, did they do a live show? The first you guys did, I was like, yeah, once I get on, tell them my story. Boom, you're on, man. What's your name, and where are you calling from? Uh, my name is Josh, and I'm calling from Louisiana. Louisiana. Woo! Thanks, man. Thanks for the call. Uh, yeah, man. So this is a story I tell people. Like, I like to think I haven't had a lot of uh, paranormal stuff happen to me, but it's like. I have, when I think about it, it's like, it's a lot. It's all very personal. Uh, so it's like, uh, this one story, this happened when I was in a, I was a sophomore in high school. And uh, I had kind of a ghost stalker, all right, in my house. And so, like, what? my house... Hold on, hold on. Did you say ghost talker yeah. or ghost stalker? A ghost stalker. Oh, fuck. Nope. Yeah. So maybe somebody can help me identify what what was going on. Well, I tell people this story, who was in the parent, they're like, I don't know, they no no clue. But uh, it happened like one day, it's all of a sudden. Like my house, I live in my house, of course, you know, all my life. Like it's, it's like, no, I've no never, clue. I've had paranormal experience in the house. Um, like weird stuff happened, but it's like it's under undeniably paranormal. But this is like the most like kind of in my face that it's ever been um and it's like one time uh i came home from school and so if i was the only person at home my sister had dance practice my mom and my dad they worked together 
so they're not there. I just meet by myself. And so I'm on the computer, you know, uh, playing video games, whatever. And then it's like, all of a sudden, you know, I get like a, a feeling in my stomach. It's like, like, like somebody told you to tell you some bad news, you know? And it's just like, I'm like, man, what's that? And it's like, I got up and I walked uh, from the den where the computer was to like, what's the bathroom? And it's like, all of a sudden, man, it's like in a little threshold there between like the three rooms and the bathroom and my sister's room and my room, like kind of like three-way split. Right in that threshold, it's like this, like, this smell. And it was like a very sweet, like cinnamon apple smell. And it caught me off guard because of how potent it was. But then, like, when I stepped back to smell it, because it was like, you, you smell like, what, what, what's that? And you step back, it was gone. Like, there's nothing there at all. And so I'm like, wow, that was so weird. You know, so I go to the bathroom, whatever, come back, go sit back down at the, at the, uh, at the computer. Think nothing of it, really. <clears throat> and then it's like, I get the feeling again. And then I'm like, man, what, you know, what's, what's going on? You know, like, I've never, I've been at home by myself hundreds of thousands of times, never had this feeling before. I get up and the smell is like, it's in like a different threshold, like going to like to our dining room. And I'm like, well, what's the, what's, what's going on? Like, this is very weird. And like, so this happened a lot while I'm by myself and, you know, it happens over the course of a, of a few days. And then it's like, um, I'm like, all right. I come home again. I say, I'm not going to sit in the den anymore. I'm going to go to my room and play on a computer. So I go to my room, play on a computer, or whatever. And so it's like, again, I get the feeling, you know, like somebody like watching me or something. And I'm just like, bro, what, 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 what is this going on? So I leave my room and right at the threshold of my room is that smell again. And it just, it hits you like that. And then it's gone. And it's like, you don't smell this thing anywhere in the house. And so I'm looking around like my mom has like these automatic air fresheners. So I'm, I'm going up to the like the bookshelf, taking down air fresheners, smelling it. I go into like my sister's room. Like I'm finding every bottle of lotion she has, I'm smelling it on my hand. Like, you know, every little body perfume she has, I'm spraying it, smelling it. Like there's gotta be something that they spill something or something going on where I'm picking up the smell. And it's like, it's nothing, man. I can't smell anything in her room that resembles that smell. I go to my mom's room. I go to every bottle of perfume she has. I'm like spraying and smelling. I can't find anything even remotely resembling that, right? And so I'm in my mom's room. I'm leaving. And right as I leave the threshold of her room, there's a smell right there on the threshold, just like that, and it's gone. And that weirded me out, like, to no end. So I go to my room. I close the door for the rest of the day. I'm like... (laughs) <laughs> I don't go out and leave my room until my parents go home, you know? And so, uh, one night... How old? How uh, old's your house? How old's your house that you're living in? Our house is actually new. Like, it was built a year before I was born, a year or two before I was born. Um, it was like, it was, it was a trailer. So it was like, no, it was, you know, it was built. And then my parents bought like a year after it was built or whatever. And like the land... Now, we stay in a place uh, I don't want to like dox it, but it's like um, we stay where they used to hold Germans during World War II, uh, and it's like there's actually a a very famous um, a place that was like a, a, a POW camp, and it was like right across, it's like right across the street from where we stay, like not too far. Um, and I took a tour of that place before when I was in kindergarten, and that the, the, the basement to that place weirded me out. Like the basement to that place absolutely weird I don't know what all went down there I, I'm i not sure at all but I know like that place weird to me out but like I've never had growing up prior to this experience I've had one paranormal experience you know in my house uh, that was very very unnerving um, wait, wait, before we go uh, before, we go, uh, before we go to another story because we try and limit to one per caller what ex- oh, oh yeah I, I'm, I'm not going to into that what, what, what exactly like what is, what was the smell exactly like detail? It was like a it was like a crisp like a, an apple cinnamon like type smell like I mean imagine Ugh. like it's funny I just like imagine like a fresh baked apple pie kind of right but it was like it really, really it, 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 it like, kind of gives me it kind of gives me shivers that you said that because when you said apple cinnamon I've had a couple people tell me about experiences where they smell this 
like an apple pie sensation. So as soon as you said apple cinnamon, like my hairs kind of stood up. And now that you're saying apple pie, I'm like, I'm like, man, I was like, Weird. I've heard from a couple other people who have had paranormal experiences where they get this like overwhelming smell of apple pie. I don't know why, um, but it, you know, it's it give it give me chills and and uh, goose pimples just just that you said that because I was thinking in my head I was like oh, I'm gonna tell yeah. this guy about this apple pie thing and then you just said it. Weird. Yeah, man. It's yeah. So like the, the, the door comes to your head. I'm almost done with it. Uh, so like one night I had a dream and in my dream I was like in school or whatever and then it's like I saw like this woman I've never seen her before in my whole life. It was like this woman with like red hair. Uh, in green eyes, like, oh, oh, who's this? Never seen her. And I remember, like, in my dream, she was telling me, as long as I'm with you, you never have to worry about anything, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, okay. And, like, I know it's a dream, and I'm trying to get out of my dream out of the way. Like, I blink a few times, and I'm out of my dream. And it's like, when I do it, and I'm getting out, my room is, like, saturated in that smell. Like, just absolutely saturated. And I get up, and I run out of my room quick. I leave. Uh, and then it's like, the last night this happened, um, I I was uh I just came back from eating, uh, and so if everybody's asleep, it's like twelve in, at midnight, and so I can't sleep for some reason. I'm I'm totally wired for whatever reason, can't sleep, and I'm Whoa. doing like weird stuff. I'm turning on the TV, turn off the TV. I got just I'm totally like just up, and so it's like I said, man, I'm just to go to sleep. I got school, I got to do this like presentation, whatever. So I, I lay down, and while I'm laying down, like I get a feeling of like dread, like. And I'm just like, what the, what's this? And so I raise up out of my bed and I can smell that smell over me. And then it's like, as I'm going down, the smell is like going down with me, getting stronger and stronger. And so I put the covers over my head. I'm like, oh, Lord, geez, I, I don't want this to happen. And so I feel, I feel a tug at my covers. And I like kind of, I'm like, I'm tripping. It's not, this is not happening. It's not real. And so the covers start to leave my hand. And then it's like, I've got my eyes closed and I open them up. And I look at the foot of my bed and my covers are raising up onto the wall like somebody's about to pop the covers. And I scream, I say, no. And I snatch the covers and I run to the, to the light. I turn it on and there's nobody there. Like nobody in my room. There's one way in my room, no way out. So I leave my room, go to my sister's room. Hey. My sister. Huh? I Well, I just want to, like, I'm, I'm going to try to reassure you a little bit here. There's there's no way if you're smelling that sweet sweet apple pie is this does this demon or ghost or whatever mean you any harm you know what I mean like <laughs> it's some sweet old granny hey, ghost I, I, right? granny ghost <laughs> you know what I mean she's probably she's probably <laughs> trying to shake out your duvet to fluff it up right and you were just hey, using chat <laughs> right she was probably a little trying to, she, she was pro probably trying to tuck you in as snug as a bug in a rug and you were you had a little meltdown because yeah. you're little right meantime but like she's a demon from hell. <laughs> There's no sulfur. There's no, right? You know, it's sweet apple pie. Or maybe it's a lure. You lure in, lure him in with some sweet apple pie and then fucking suck his soul. No. That could happen. Yeah, for real. Like the bad way. Not the good way. Not the good way. <laughs> the terrible way. <laughs> hey, man, we're going to, we got to take yeah, some more callers, but, but we appreciate that we got to, we oh, got yeah, we, we to try and limit around 10 minutes or so per story. But before we let you go, if you haven't been watching live stream, we've been doing this game called What's in the Box? What's in the Box? We're trying to find uh, someone with a particular set of skills. And that set of skills is being able to mentally project yourself into Zell's studio and tell us what the fuck is in that box. Got the box right here. I'm in Kelowna, BC, Canada, Earth. Hone in on Meteor Studios and tell me what's in. Close your eyes, clear your mind, and try in the first picture that comes to your mind. Let us know what's in the box. What's in the box? Um, I want to say it's something. It's black. Um, I want to say it's black. It's something to do with a microphone. Uh, not a pop filter, like a microphone holder. Well, I mean, we said it's in a microphone box at the start of this episode, but but you are incorrect, good sir. It is not what's in the box. Okay. All right. I, good try, though. Good I still try. can't believe no one's guessed Gwyneth Paltrow's head. <laughs> <laughs> right, brother. Yeah, we appreciate the call. That was uh, thanks for calling in. Take care. Uh, later. Take care, man. Have a good night. Bye. Oh, the, the sirens almost came out. Was, they're coming out. I was hearing keywords. I heard dream. I heard sleep. I heard bed. Duvet. Shadow. Uh, shadow. 
I mean, I, I was I was hearing them round around the block. I heard tires squealing. They were there. Hello, Cosmic Channels. Hi, hey guys. I got a sweet alien story for you guys. A sweet. Oh, oh fuck yeah! Hmm. What's your name? Yeah, Where are you sorry. calling from? Oh, my name's Ridge. I'm near McGuire Air Force Base. From where, sorry? It's in New Jersey, near Wrightstown. Okay, New Jersey. Gotcha. Yeah, dirty Jersey. All right, lay it on us. <laughs> All right, so the cool thing about this story is that it's actually documented in a book called The uh, Adriason Legacy by Raymond Palmer. Um, my mom was actually the person that um, was friends with the woman who was basically documented in this book. And uh, it's a Peeping Tom story, so it's really creepy. Oh, no. <laughs> Peeping Tom alien? All right, so... Yeah, so yeah, it, it's pretty crazy. So basically, my mom was hanging out with her friend Becky. This was in Hayes, Virginia, 94. And uh, she was just having some coffee. My dad and Rick, I think it was Becky's like boyfriend or husband, went out to the store. And my mom and Becky were sitting there drinking coffee, you know, talking, whatever. And my mom, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, just started to freeze and stare at the door. So Becky said, basically, my mom's eyes kind of like grew bigger than quarters and she stared and stared and she started freaking out like, Becky, what is that? What is that? So my mom basically saw this weird looking alien guy. Uh, The book says dark age, but my mom always said that if she took like a big box of, you know, color pencils or crayons, she could never really like pinpoint the color of this creature that she saw but and its head moved kind of like a cartoon character and it stared at her so that basically happened and uh my mom starts freaking out obviously becky goes outside to check on everything and um to this so basically after that it happened uh my my father and uh rick came back and they joked about it but my mom would never go anywhere in that house anymore by herself made sure all the lights were on if she was and she's always you know with somebody it's the craziest thing she said the eyes were pretty big and it seemed soulless and it the way it moved its head like she said it was like a cartoon character i can't explain it but it was wild when i heard the story so just the way it looked at her could she like get a idea of the height or not really um if i think if i remember her telling me the story correctly i know the door she said it was like near the middle so if you think about, I guess, an average door, I don't know the height. So it's about halfway, maybe six. a little bit lower. Okay, yeah, average door is around six foot six. So yeah, that that put it right around the short gray height, you know, like a three, hey, three and a half foot she, little creature. Yeah. That's and wild. the crazy part about it is she said the way it moved its head was like a cartoon character. So I can imagine maybe like... Now, are we talking like cartoon uh, character, like The Simpsons, or like uh, Canadian versions and South <laughs> Canadians in South Park with their hot head is cut in half? <laughs> no, I think she said something like it kind of reminded her of like Looney Tunes when they stretch their head, where their neck almost seems like they don't have any bone structure at all. So that's oh, that's what really kind of freaked me out when I heard that story. And just, I just have to ask, um, your mom ever dabble in any uh you know the wacky tobacco or the uh you know the magic mushrooms <laughs> well yeah she, i know she's done stuff like that but she was actually uh pregnant with me at the time so oh, i so hope no, not so so stone sober <laughs> stone sober yeah my and my brother was like real young <laughs> okay all right wow all right that's really that I always, I, you always have to ask because people will listen back to this and be like shoot a comment and be like well I bet she was high you, no one asked <laughs> that's fine so it's like, just no, curious, no my mom right? she probably was high at one point <laughs> probably not <laughs> but with, not during not this pregnant point with me. not during this yeah. point <laughs> yeah I hope so, I don't think so so what what does she what does she say does she believe it was some type of ET being or was a trick of her imagination or because it obviously scared her pretty good so so it's really weird so she always said that it was she definitely saw something in her mind I know she wouldn't lie about that but um, she always said that it kind of like it was like I don't know she's sort of superstitious she always said it was kind of running over like devil or something like that 
That's the weird part about it. I don't, I, I don't know how she got aliens and demons mixed up or whatever, but she always just said that it gave her some sort of fear. Aliens and demons could be one and the same. People just get them mixed up, get call them different names. Who knows? Yeah, that I honestly could believe that. I've thought about that a lot too. Look, it's a wild tale. All right, just before we let you go, though, have you been watching the live stream? Because we're playing this game called What's in the Box? What's in the Box? What's in the box? <laughs> yeah. What the fuck is yeah, in the Box? Yeah, I just got it halfway. I... <laughs> All right, so I emptied Wait. my mind early. Empty and... it. Oh, sorry. Empty it again. Okay. <laughs> I know it's empty. But re-empty dub- it. Double empty put a new Put a new bag in there. Yep. Take out the trash. Empty that mind. Project your mind to Meteor Sound Studio in Kelowna, BC, Canada, Earth. And let us know what's in the box. I'm seeing a glass, maybe a chalice, like a beer mug. That's what I keep thinking. Keeps thinking like a beer mug, something glass. You good, yeah, sir. Like a chalice, a glass. Are incorrect. That is not what's in the box. <laughs> no. <laughs> good try, though. Good try. Thank you. All right, man. Thanks for the story. Have a good night. Yeah, no problem. You guys have a good night. Bye. Cheers. I can't give I any hints to, of what's I in wanna, the box. So no, you I can't because can't. if you give hints, then it, it then people start guessing. Degrades, then people are start guessing to the hints. But we want we want what we want is we want someone to like even if someone randomly guesses exactly what's in that box, that is some crazy. If someone randomly yes. guesses this object, which I can't give any hint, zero hints on, uh, you're a remote viewer. I'll give you guys a hint. I know nothing that's in the box. I have no nothing. He won't tell me. I know it's something. There is I, something in that box. There is something in the box. I'm not fucking with people. Uh, that's all I know. He will literally not tell me. I can't. I, I, very I know this motherfucker will text someone and be like, hey, call the show. Hey, this is what's yeah, in the I box. Will. I would. <laughs> I would, 100%. Uh, now, Zell, if someone's like th- four, how, wh- what percentage are you going to be like, I'm all gonna, right, you, you're close enough? We've talked about it before, 20 to 80% range. If you're in the 20 yeah. to 80% range, I'll say you're you're pretty close. I'll, I'll, I'll let yeah. you know. We're going to forge your name to some people who might want to talk to you about. We uh, will. You know, we might forge your name to a three-letter agency. That's all we're saying. Yep. Careful. All right, another caller. Hello, Cosmic Channels. Oh, shit. Ron? You are on Hello? the show. You're on the show, and I, I'm just going to warn you right now. It's overtime, baby. So It's not quite let's overtime. Hear. Oh. Oh, never mind. Not it, yet. it might be oh, half, half, halfway through the call. It might be <laughs> overtime, so it might things might take a turn here. <laughs> let's see. Where are you, what's your name? Where are you calling uh, from? Uh, my name is Brandon. Uh, I'm from Tennessee, but I'm calling from DC area. Calling from DC, right on. The DMV. The DMV. So, um, I actually have a haunting story for you guys. Mm. Hell yeah! Late on us. So, this was back when I was in high school, um, probably about 16. Um, so I was house setting with a buddy uh, for his boss. So, you know, we move in, you know, go in after school, whatever, on Friday. Watching for the weekend, no big deal. So as we're moving everything in, we it's an old Victorian house. Um, you know, probably about 120 years old or so at the time. And it has one of those old, like, padlocks to the, like, old, like, oak hard door. Yep. Um, as we're moving everything in, it's just me and him in the house. We go out to the car, the door's locked. As we're moving like our stuff and drinks and food and stuff in for the weekend. So, like, that's weird. So we go through the basement. I pick the lock, go to the basement door, go upstairs. Like, okay, maybe that's just a weird thing. No big deal. Check the lock, couldn't find anything. Couldn't like recreate it or anything like that. So. That was like, that happened like three or four times over that weekend. But the first night, he's sleeping in the master bedroom, which is the door. As soon as you walk to the front door, it's on the right hand side. I'm sleeping in the living room uh, on the main floor. And I wake up about, I was sleeping. Don't sound the alarms. <laughs> but I wake up about 3 a.m., which is, you know, witching hour. 
So yeah. he was arguing with his uh, girlfriend at the time, um, the night, you know, earlier that day. So I wake up, I hear like, kind of like arguing, it sounds like muffled, you know, arguing upstairs. So when I wake up, I'm thinking, okay. Hold you up. Know, he didn't want to wake me up. He, Hold, Hold up. up. Whoa, 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 whoa. We you, need some clarification here. You said woke up. You said yeah. wake, we're here and wake up. So, uh, that's why I said don't sound the alarms. <laughs> no, hey, no we, don't, we don't sound the alarms here. You sound <laughs> the alarms, my friend. <laughs> so, all right. Yeah, that's true. But I wake up at 3 a.m. I get up, so I'm fully awake because I hear arguing upstairs. Okay. My thought right. was he was arguing with his girlfriend. He didn't want to wake me up, so he went upstairs. So all of a sudden, I hear what sounds like a kid, like light feet, running up, or like down the hallway upstairs. My friend is not very light, to say the least. <laughs> so I'm like, what the fuck is he doing? You calling your friend fat? So you saying he's a, you saying he's I'm, a Porky the Pig or what? He's a hefty guy. All right, hefty. Huh? Good word. And <laughs> and so I wake up. I hear that arguing. I hear the feet running. So I get up. I'm like, what is he doing? So I go to check on him. I happen to look into the master bedroom. Somebody's asleep. So I do the white guy, you know, the white guy thing. I'm like, I'm going to go check it out. So No white guy's upstairs. ever said that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, just not a, that's not a so white guy thing. I go thing. upstairs. So I go upstairs, a white guy goes, I better call the authorities. I, go, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but I go upstairs and I go to check it out. So I go to where the first step stopped and it's a, it's a bedroom. So my buddy didn't tell me the house we were studying for was her sister is a famous Broadway, Broadway actress. This woman was weird when she was a kid. Her listen, all drama kids are weird when they're kids. Yeah, it's true. Right? That is true. He didn't tell me, but um, her closet was her journal. So sharpies, crayons, pencils, pens. She wrote her journal in her closet on the wall. So I go into this house or uh, into the thing, and um, there, there's only they, one door. Did they own the this house? The empty. Yeah, what's going on here? His his boss owned the house. He was house sitting while she was out of town. So <laughs> I go. Wait, wait, wait. The, there's only one. So this room. is his boss's house, yeah. and this chick is so writing her, a journal her, on the walls in Sharpie. Right. This is her like childhood okay. home that she lives in. Like she bought it. She lived there. You know. Okay. I got gotcha, you. Got gotcha, you. So gotcha. I go into the house or go into the closet, pull the little like string hanging from the ceiling see a bunch of writing I flip the fuck out so I go down and wake him up and he was like okay he goes oh yeah dude she, that was her journal no big deal and I'm like you're not gonna that's no big deal my uh, my spouse is just a fucking serial killer who <laughs> writes her manifesto on the walls of our, our place so, no big deal <laughs> don't worry about it so I stayed Friday so after Saturday, after the door locked, hold on, hold on. Did he, did he, did he act like you were being invasive by reading her journal? <laughs> right, he was. What? <laughs> so like what? from like twenty years ago when she was a kid. <laughs> That's private. Wow. So, right. Not, not not mentioning the arguing and the little kid running upstairs that I heard. He didn't even care about that. Because he never heard it. So Saturday. Did you write? Night, did you read what my girlfriend wrote on the walls? Because that's her journal, and that's private, my friend. <laughs> it was a basic, like you know, little kid nonsense. But so Saturday, the door locked a couple times. Saturday night, we're you know getting ready for bed or whatever, and I hear the same thing. After that, I'm like, hey, dude, I'm going home. <laughs> I'm like, hey, I'm not staying here. Yeah, no doubt. But, so fast forward about three years, I joined the military, I joined the Navy, and I'm in training, and I'm in my schooling, and I call my ex-wife, who was my fiance at the time. And my fiance at the time was like, I hate this house. 
And I was like, why? And she's like, she's like, there's fucking know, the kids will be taking jiffy nap. marker all over the fucking walls. <laughs> she never said a word about the place. Like she didn't tell me who it was or who owned it or anything like that. She just told me the kids will be sleeping on the couch beside me and I'll hear the kids playing and running around upstairs. <sighs> or, you know, it sounds like the kids are playing and running, running around upstairs. And I was like, is this so-and-so's house? And she's like, how did you know? And I was like, well, like two, three years ago, I had the same experience. Oh, One of the kids up. had an imaginary friend that never left the house. And her name was Catherine. And this kid was like six at the time. And her imaginary friend, she said, Catherine wears a white dress. She lived next door. Her parents died in a fire in the house next door. Oh, fuck. <laughs> nope. And I was like, well, I know which house you're talking about. And it was just weird that this kid had an imaginary friend only when her dad lived in that house. And that kid never, or her imaginary friend never left the house. Weird. So that's, uh, that's definitely one house. When I go back home and visit, I would, I say I will never get near again. You will burn it down. Yeah. That's what you mean. Yeah. No one's inside. I mean, if I didn't burn it down. If I, no one's inside. if I wouldn't get arrested, I would definitely burn that place right. down. You won't get arrested if you're sneaky about that's it. That's what it means. That is true. If you tell the cops, <laughs> hey, hey, motherfuckers, this house is severely haunted. It had to go. They go, eh, but it was just okay. It was weird that, you know, a hard padlock door that you have to like turn the lock, lock on itself two or three, you know, a couple times like throughout the weekend. And what I heard upstairs was what my ex-wife heard upstairs and the girl she was watching had an imaginary friend in that house that would not leave the house. Super weird. I have no idea. Like I'm like, I'm pretty, you know, like I'm a, I'm a skeptic, you know, like I try not to like everything's haunted, but that place it's freaks fucking, me out. It's haunted. It's haunted, man. All right. Well, uh, we want to know one question. What's, what's in the box? In the box? What's, in the box? What's, what's in the box? What's in the box? What the fuck's in the box? What's in the box? But before you answer, make sure you, make sure you clear your mind. Yeah. Send your consciousness through through the atmosphere, ionosphere, whatever sphere you can get to, drop your mind down into Meteor Sound Studio in Kelowna, BC, and tell me what's in the box. So I pulled up the live feed, and I heard you saying this earlier while I was driving. I want to go with baseball. Possibly card, but I'm going to go with a baseball. What Did you see the a, a picture of a baseball in your mind, or are you just guessing a baseball? Or I'm trying to, how do you, how do you come I, to this? I, 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 I felt baseball whenever you first asked the first person, whenever I had it playing in my, thing, or in my car, I, I pictured a baseball. All so right. I'm going to, I want to take card, but I'm going to go with baseball. A baseball. A sp- Listen, my friend. You are wrong. That is not what's in the box. <laughs> Dude, every, oh, you had me. I was like, did this guy just guess it? Did he, was it a baseball? It was did not a baseball. It? Fuck. Well, hey, all right. it's, it's not all what's right. in the box. But Hey, sucks to suck. But no, guys. All all right. Right. Before I get off, before I get off, I want to say, uh, I actually just found your podcast probably about around Christmas time um, when I was driving to see my kids in 13 hour drive. And. I just randomly came across it and I've listened to the entire podcast with my drive yeah, and that work. Awesome. Love what you guys do. Uh, keep doing what you do. I got a question for Cheers, you. Did man. you find Cosmic Channels or did you find Alien Theorist Theorizing first? Uh, Alien Theorist Theorizing. Right on. All right, brother. Thanks Cheers, for the brother. call. Just, we appreciate it. I heard one and then I just went back from the beginning and I just started my way up. Uh, so, first time calling. Um, you poor well, sucker. time listener. First time caller. Poor sucker I had to listen to those early episodes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. All right, man. Have a good yeah, night. Have a good one. Cheers. Should, should we take one more? Should we take one more? What are you feeling? You know so? what I'm doing? You know what I'm doing since we're in overtime? What? Next next caller doesn't get to tell a story. They just guess what's in the box. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Listen. 
Listen, listen, Hello. motherfucker. We don't want. We don't care about your story. We don't goddamn care about your story. story. All right. What's in the box? A, we don't give a shit about your story. We want to know what the hell's in the box. What's in the Tell box? What's in the box? Um, <laughs> I'll just say a cup. A cup? Yeah. Wrong. Next. <laughs> <laughs> All right, get another call. Let's see. It's, 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 uh, we told you overtime. Cosmic Towns overtime. It's, it's, we, we do. We this do whatever is well we want. into overtime. This is well into overtime. We do whatever we want. Call back. What's in the box? Take a few more callers. Then I'm gonna tell you what's in the box at the end. All right. Why are you gonna tell us what's in the box? You gotta keep. Is it no. new item every week? Every week, new item. It's Uncle Slam, and I think. Um, oh, Uncle Slam, what's in the box? Line my, a third to seventeenth chakra. It's a garment of some type. A garment. Like a, a garment. I'm like a piece of clothing? Worn on the upper body, perhaps a shirt. Perhaps a shirt. Slam, love you, but you're wrong. Peace, next. Yeah, fucking all cap, no cattle on that guess. <laughs> Woo! All right, what's in the box? A few more ca- few more calls here. Let's go. All right, what's in the uh, box? Cosmic what's channels. What's in the box? Is it a potato in a box of hooked on phonics? <laughs> it's funny That's guy. Good. We got That'd funny guy good. here. Funny guy. Funny guy. We got a funny guy here. Nope. Next. <laughs> All right. A couple more guesses of what's in the box. Then we'll end this Cosmic Channels. What's in the box? What's in the We're box? We're in overtime here, baby. No one else wants to guess and get hung right. up on? Well, I guess. fuck you then. All right. I'm going to give 10 second countdown for one more call for what's in the box. And then I'm going to tell you what's in the box. And then we will put a new object in there next week. Every week. Every I, like, I like the new object every week because then it's not, we can't get a random, you know, eventually. Eventually, someone will guess it. If, eventually, within 100 years, someone will guess what's in the box if we never change it. Hell we yeah. want, we're looking for those psychic abilities. All right, last call of the night. What's in the fucking box? Uh, is it a stapler? It is not a stapler, but thank you for guessing. Damn. All right, that's it. Cosmic, Cosmic, Cosmic Channels is done. I'm going to tell you what's in the box. Uh, I'm gonna go what's get, in the box? Bring it open. Let me get this box from over here. <laughs> so I didn't lie. This is a mic box. This is from a Neumann TLM 103 mic box. Yeah. And in, this week, what was in the box? This week in the box, I'm going to reach into the box. Scissors. Scissors with a red handle. With a red handle. That's an that's an everyday item. It's easily guessable. I wasn't. Try- right? I'm not trying to punk people. It's just a regular item. I found it. Put it in the box. A- and it's. Hey, listen. We're not being mean here. We're looking for talented individuals. And if you didn't guess that, you're obviously not talented. And we only want the best psychic readers to forward their names to three we letter want, agencies. We want the goddamn Jesse Ventura of remote viewers. Yeah. We want a goddamn. Sexual tyrannosaurus <laughs> is what we're looking for of uh, whatever that is. Remote viewing. Remote viewing, boxes. astral projection, you name it. Some yeah. type of psychic ability. We want you. 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 So next, Cosmic Channels, please call I, back. I would say the closest, Stapler. Stapler was, you know. It was close. It's an office supply. Closest. I would say it's an office supply. Yeah, it's office supply. Too. It's in the ballpark. You're Whoever guessed Stapler... Hone, hone those skills. You had hone the, those skills because you had the genre right. Of, you had the genre right. You were you were obviously in. You were maybe you just didn't let your mind clear. You were you grasped too quick. Just let it uh, let it sit. Like right, let it salivate a little bit uh, before you call and just th- you know guess. But uh, we'll, next week, well, or next Cosmic Channels, which is April tenth, tenth, April. I uh, will have another. What's in the box? It'll be a new item. It will not be scissors, scissors with a red handle. Nope. Or will it? Oh, or will, will it? it? Nobody knows. All right. That's it for Cosmic Channels. Uh, thanks, everyone. Cosmic Channels is brought to you by Big Theory Productions. The Cosmic Channels are now closed. DQ presents Picture this. You stand before the awe-inspiring new signature stack burger menu at DQ and your mouth wonders, where have you been all my life? 
That's five taste bud tempting cheeseburgers with 100% real seasoned beef. You peek at the loaded A1 stack burger with two premium sauces, then the flamethrower stack burger with tongue tingling jalapeno bacon. Then you realize moments like these are exactly why we have the DQ signature stack burger menu. DQ, happy tastes good. Get it delivered at DQ.com. At Kroger, we believe fresh means holding our produce to a higher standard. That's why we do up to a 27 point inspection on our produce. Like for citrus, we check for things like scarring and sunburn. Yep, oranges can sunburn. And we'll make sure you never see it. In fact, we only allow the best oranges, lemons, and grapefruits to reach our shelves. Because when it comes to fresh for everyone, we believe the juice is worth the squeeze. Kroger, fresh for everyone.